Good morning to all of you watching our chapel. Welcome to the Masters Academy Remembrance Day virtual ceremony. As Canadians, we gather every year on November 11th to remember the sacrifice of those who have lost their lives in war. This year, our remembrance continued despite our continued separation. COVID cannot and must not stop us from honoring those who have given their lives to the freedom we cherish today. My name is Savannah Pollock, and it's my pleasure to introduce Sophia Shahow and Taryn Dassey. We'll be your MCs for today. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land we gather on is the ancestral territory of the Sik Sika A Sitapi, the Sik Sika A, the Guyani, the Pukini, the Am Sika Pukini. We acknowledge all the Treaty 7 signatories, including the Shu Inna people, as well as the AERA Nakoda Nations, Bears Paw, Chiniki, and Wesley. This land is also the home of the Metis Nation regions, three and all others who call this place home. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Metis, and Inuit who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today, and those who have gone before us. We make this acknowledgement as an act of reconciliation and gratitude who those territories we reside on. The three of us are honored to represent our grade six classes in hosting the ceremony of remembrance. Please stand in attention wherever you are as we honor our great country with our national anthem. I love unfinished things, the bookmark set between closed pages, the field that waits for seed. Canada is a place like that, a history incomplete, a traveler turning around and wondering at the distance gone, the distance yet to go. What was there, Canada? What is ever there on a country's road, but times when we were glorious and times of things no one should have done? Our anthem understands, words of pride with notes of mourning, and the music of resolve to finish and turn towards the road ahead. Here is a place to say, we go on, not as before, and so keep faith with the best of what we are. O oh Canada, it is a complex love that keeps us together, and all the more true love for that. Ka -ka -na -da. God, our Father in heaven, to be present here at our assembly and guide us in remembrance. Let us honor him in praise. Please join us in the song, Here I Am to Worship, featuring our grade three to six students.
We are the peacemakers of the future. Peace begins with me, with you, with all of us together. The Bible says the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Psalm 29, verse 11. We as children of God and citizens of Canada must be examples of peace for all people of the world to follow. As former American First Lady diplomat and activist Eleanor Roosevelt stated, it isn't enough to talk about peace, one must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it, one must work at it. We need God to guide us in our work for peace. Please listen carefully as Molly, Olivia W., Tasso, and Dara, grade six students here at Masters, open our chapel with a special prayer for peace. Dear God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we pray, pray for, for peace. peace. Bring peace for all nations. Bring peace for our communities. Bring peace within ourselves. May, May your peace be found everywhere. Lead us from hate to love. Guide us from war to peace. Let love fill our hearts, our world, and your people. May, May your, your love be found, found everywhere. everywhere. Through diversity, we recognize unity. Through compassion, we recognize need. Only you have the power to transform our world. May your, your wisdom, wisdom be found, found everywhere. everywhere. Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Send us your peace, O Lord, which is perfect and everlasting. God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for peace. Amen. Loss of life is the tragedy of war. Many Canadians face this tragedy in the most personal of ways as few families escape the loss of a father, son, husband, uncle, neighbor, or friend. Over the two world wars, more than 113,000 brave young soldiers left their homes and families to fight overseas, never to return again, leaving their families, mostly mothers, wives, daughters, and sisters, to grieve their loss and carry on life without them. This story is told in the touching music video I Will Sing You Home by Newfoundland Folk Group, the Anna Sisters, and the Shalloway Youth Choir. As you watch, reflect on the lyrics, I sing so we will not forget you, I will sing you home.
I promise. During the Second Battle of Ypres in World War I, Captain John McRae, a doctor in the Canadian Army, noticed how poppies bloomed between the makeshift graves on the war ravaged. Flanders Field in the European country of Belgium. In response to this observation, Dr. McRae wrote the poem, In Flanders Field. The story of the poppy as a symbol of remembrance is a fascinating one. The following video will teach us about the origins of the poppy and why it continues to be associated so closely with Remembrance Day here in Canada. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. Recognize these lines? They're part of the famous poem written by Canadian soldier John McRae in 1915. Since then, the poppy has become a popular symbol for soldiers who have died in battle. But it wasn't until 1921 that the first poppies were distributed in Canada. Since then, the poppy has served as a visual pledge to never forget the numerous Canadians who have lost their lives defending our country. And every November, poppies can be seen on the jackets, lapels and hats of millions of Canadians. This tradition has an interesting story. It was a writer who first associated the poppy with the battlefield during the Napoleonic Wars, over 110 years before the poppy's adoption in Canada. He noticed that the battlefields in Flanders, France, were barren before the battles begun, and yet were bursting with the scarlet flowers after the fighting had ended. It was Canadian soldier and surgeon, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, that made this same connection a hundred years later, during World War I. The poppy quickly became a symbol for soldiers who died in battle. Lieutenant Colonel John McRae was born on November 30, 1872, in Guelph, Ontario. He joined the cadets at the young age of 14, and three years later enlisted in the Militia Field Battery. When Britain declared war on Germany in August 1914, McRae was among the first wave of Canadians who enlisted to serve in the Canadian Forces Artillery as a brigade surgeon. In April 1915, McRae was stationed near Ypres, Belgium, an area traditionally known as Flanders. 
It was there that McCrae witnessed some of the harshest fighting conditions of the First World War, while he cared for wounded troops in the area. It was a month later, in May 1915, that fellow soldier and friend Lieutenant Alexis Helmer would die on the battlefield. A day later, McCrae would pen his now famous poem in Flanders Fields, a reflection of his surroundings and experiences on the battlefield. His poem was first published on December 8, 1915, and garnered worldwide attention. McCrae continued to serve as a surgeon in a number of Canadian hospitals for the remainder of the war. Lieutenant Colonel John McCrae succumbed to pneumonia on January 28, 1918. Little did he know that those few lines he wrote on the battlefield would soon become a universal tribute for soldiers who died in war. So how did this 19th century discovery in France make it to North America? In 1918, an American woman named Moina Michael was working at a New York City YMCA and came across McCrae's poem. She was so moved by his work that she pledged to wear the poppy in memory of the fallen soldiers. But the story doesn't end there. Two years later in 1920, during a visit to the U.S., a French woman named Madame Guerin learned of Moyna's custom. And upon her return to France, she decided to use the poppies to raise money for children living in areas affected by the war. Finally, on July 5, 1921, the predecessor of the Royal Canadian Legion, the Great War Veterans Association, followed Madame Guerin's example and adopted the poppy as its official flower of remembrance and as a fundraising aid. Cloth poppies were made by disabled veterans, and the production of poppies was run by Veterans Affairs. In 1996, the Legion took over, and today, the Poppy Campaign is one of their most important programs. Money raised from poppy sales provides assistance to ex-service people, funding for medical appliances and research, as well as various other purposes. Traditionally, the distribution of poppies to Canadians begins on the last Friday of October, and they can be worn any time after that date. Although it's customary for the poppy to be worn only during the remembrance period, a person may wear one any time they wish to do so. Often, you can spot them at commemorative events throughout the year. In 2010, the Government of Canada unveiled a new commemorative Remembrance Day coin. The first ever poppy coin was introduced in 2004. The bottom of the coin reads, Remember Souvenir. It's also unique in that it was the first painted coin to be placed in circulation. Here at Beechwood Cemetery, over 75,000 Canadians have been laid to rest, including poets, prime ministers and soldiers. Since the Northwest Rebellion of 1885, soldiers who died in the line of duty and veterans of war have been buried here. And every year around Remembrance Day, the military sections of the cemetery are adorned with dozens of poppy wreaths in honor of those who've served us. And now you know. And now, with honor to Dr. McCrae and the soldiers who gave their lives in war, grade 6 students Ash Deerholm, Simon Kyle, and Daniel Danish Poor will recite the famous poem, In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely sing and fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. In heartfelt remembrance of those who fought in World War I and II, and those who continue to serve in our armed forces overseas, we would like to share our very personal video tribute of our family members. All of these individuals are connected to our master's family, and in this small way, we honor their personal sacrifice for our freedom. Please watch and remember.
The tradition of observing November 11th as a day to remember those who died in the line of duty began with the signing of the Armistice to end World War I in, the, in 1918. The hostilities between the two opposing for, forces formally ceased at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Remembrance Day was established by King George V in 1919 to honor and remember the men, women, and children who were killed or injured in the war and is a time to pray and strive for continued peace. World War II, the Korean War, the Gulf War, and the war in Afghanistan that my father served in, together with all conflicts, peacekeeping missions, continue to deeply affect people throughout the world. Together with all conflicts and peacekeeping missions, continue deeply affect the people throughout the world today. In Canada, and in many other parts of the world, we continue to set aside this date 
We must carry on this important tradition in remembering and reflecting. In this way, young people may come to understand and appreciate what those have served in Canada in times of war, armed conflict, and peace stand for, and what they have sacrificed for their country. Let us pause a moment to view the video, Highway of Heroes, a touching video honoring the homecoming of those brave Canadians who have lost their lives in service to our country. The day I shipped out the numbered a dozen Upon my return We're a hundred or so From the coast and from the prairies I bet they keep coming Add one more name From Ontario And carry me home Down the highway of heroes People above with the flags flying low Carry me softly Down the highway of heroes True patriot love There was never more Personal gain, seek no justification. It's not part of my story, and it offers no comfort to the ones who remain. Just carry me home down the highway of heroes, people above, but the flags flying. Vocation. I was called by my nation without hesitation. My answer I gave. Now I'm not wondering the things that I might have been. A no consolation to the forgotten brain. So carry me home down the highway. The last post was originally a bugle call used in British Army camps to signal the sunset at the end of the day. Now it is used to commemorate those who have fallen in the war. Following the last post, we pause for a moment of silence in honor of these fallen heroes. After the moment of silence, we will hear Reveille, which was traditionally played at a sunrise as the day started. It is played following the moment of silence to symbolize the new life we have been given through the sacrifice of the soldiers who fought for our freedoms. Please stand for the last post, a moment of silence and reveille.
This brings us to the conclusion of our program. We would like to thank everyone for being part of our virtual Remembrance Day ceremony. We invite you to continue watching our Masters Family Veterans video upon our conclusion here. We like to end with these final words. They shall not go old as we that are left go old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Thank you.